guys it's a long time ago <laughs> on demand I, I thought yeah let's do some tutorial for you guys so today I'm gonna show you how to do some desert landscape for a small vignette like you can see here in this thing here I did already the clay you know don't need to show or, exp uh, or explain it too, too much you just put some uh, modeling clay of course first put glue on your circle and then put your clay on it so and of course you need to uh, dry your clay but let's start uh, with uh, putting some uh, sandy desert in this case from AK Interactive to put that on the base for that you need just simple uh, spatula like this one and you take yeah, the amount of uh, paste and you gently spread it over the clay job you did before that doesn't have to be straight or smooth like you see you know it's like yeah it's desert it's sand and you know you know guys sand goes everywhere so it's not necessary that it is nice and smooth so it's okay that it has some texture Yeah, you see what's happening, so don't need to, to explain you guys much, you know, assume all your lads understand what I'm talking about. Oh yeah, by the way, this this video especially on for on demand for uh, my collego Welderart. <laughs> so guys, I hope you're gonna watch this, because so this is for you, you know. Okay, Colego, here you go. <laughs> yeah, like you see, I spread it a bit. See? Now I'm gonna, of course, let it a bit dry, but before this we finish up, here we're gonna, that's something I do usually too. Let's first close our. That it wouldn't dry out on us. And for this I'm gonna use this one, some small gravel, very tiny, who gives it some extra texture and just just sprinkle a few. It's not you don't have to overdo it. Of course it's all by your own choice, you know, so it's your diorama if you guys making your own. But this gives some extra nice texture and some nice, yeah, something to look at, some interesting. And now we're gonna gently press it so it dries nice with the paste, just gently so it sticks on it and it stays on your vignette. So like this, you know, it adds some some extra dimension, so makes it makes your vignette looks. Uh, more richer and that's the key of doing dioramas and vignettes try always different colors and different textures so make it rich 
that it is not just some dull, some paste on it and that's it, so you know, like, the point of this is, get as close you can to some realistic effect. For now we're gonna uh, let this dry and after it I'm gonna add this product too from Green Stuff World, Crackle Paint. That's to simulate um, like cracked uh, and dried uh, soil. That gives it a, again something nice to look at and makes it, yeah, like I said before, your vignette much richer and much more close to realism. So, so but that's for the next step. So for now we're gonna let this dry and we continue when our stuff is dry with uh, the next part and that is adding the crackle paint. And so you now can see it's all nicely dried and by the way, by a magical way, <laughs> this filler appeared here. This is some uh, uh, pillar that uh, my wife sculpted for me many years ago. So now I decided finally to put it uh, on a diorama and I thought it was suitable and it lo would look nice on this one. So uh, it's not my job, it's my wife who did that sculpted from this is made out of that foam. So yeah, well, let's continue now. We're gonna do a bit of this crackle paint very randomly. The point of this is, um, if you apply it in a, in a thick way, it gives big, bigger cracks. If you, wanna, if you apply it in a thin way, then it has those tinier cracks. So I'm gonna do it now randomly to simulate, of course, always shake your bottle. And usually I apply it like this, straight out of the bottle and after it with a brush I still correct. So let's see, let me, I'll do it like this. I want to have it a nice thick layer. So to create actually the bigger crackles. So put some bit here, a bit thinner. Those of course always we can later correct a bit. So it's not a disaster if you put a bit too much, but always try to be a bit careful with it when you're applying these kind of stuff. Don't go too much in at the first time. Later you can always add some stuff, so it's easier to add than to correct to make it less. So now I'm gonna manipulate it a bit with an older brush. But don't worry, you can wash it off. This product is uh, perfectly water solvable, so you can. You don't need no thinners or special products to clean up uh, your brush after it. Yeah, I'm trying to bit smooth down the edges. That is not a, that it is not a whole a blob of it, so that the effect is nicely spread it a bit going add a bit more I'm gonna do it here also a bit to make it a smooth transition and again I'll take my brush and smooth down the edges that it would have and if you see those bubbles those big ones pop them because they will otherwise a bit ruining the shapes of those crackles so the small ones don't worry about them but the big ones try to pop them because they will, would make it not so nice So this is it for now, of course, you know, as a modeler, the thing is patience, patience, and again patience. So we have to wait again till our products nicely dry, but the next steps I can tell you guys already, we're going to add some vegetation. 
and I'll give you an example. This is made out of that out of that sea foam. Something I like to use, especially for uh, dry lands and, and desert areas, to simulate uh, dry bushes. Uh, I love to, to work with it, and it uh, creates a very realistic effect. As you can see, I painted it here with brown to give it some more richness. It's all about uh, to create realism. Uh, you have to use many different shades and colors. To yeah, that, that in my eyes, that that's it. What makes your uh, vignette so not just one color and uh, put some some soil, but uh, try to yeah enrich your uh, diorama. So we're gonna use this, several of them. Yeah, I'm gonna use also grass tufts, like these here. From Green Stuff World, also some nice thing I like to work with. So I'm gonna use the dry tufts from AK. But those are for the next step, and also the one of the st last steps gonna be. Most guys don't do it, but I love to use it everywhere as my pigments to make the soil look, yeah, again, the, the richness to create effects and uh, shades and tones that will make your uh, chief for realism much higher, so that you can, yeah, that's the way, of course, I do it. It's a, this is my way of doing it. Everybody has his own methods, of course, but th these are mine, and usually I put them on with a special brush I will show you guys later when all this stuff is dry so uh, see you when the stuff is dry and we continue so this is uh, the end result of the crackle, crackle paint when it dries you see makes like that nice uh, dried mud effect and I put it also some small uh, pedal yeah, I showed you guys before uh, this this back small uh, pedal stones so now let's uh, let's add some bit vegetation for that I prepared those small bushes you guys can see it you know, I glued a few. Uh, this is from that sea uh, foam. You know, normally every modeler should be familiar with this. Yeah, I broke off branches like you can see here, and I glued them to make it a nice bushish shape. So, oh, see some cat hair. <laughs> so, guys, I'm gonna add this now on the diorama. Yeah, take some. Uh, CA glue I punctured already a few holes because it's easier to make a hole and then put your branch in it or your bush or a tree uh, whatever you want to do like this you stick it up makes uh, smaller ones we're gonna add them on Yeah, those handle those with care because as you see 
they can be very fragile to handle here you go seal it put another one and we're gonna put also some grass tuft just but with those I have to tell you guys something and I will show you of course how I did it oh see forgot one one hole to make so like this it's just simple you know like here you go I use in this case my tweezers make a tiny hole and then put your bush nicely like this in it yeah from the the grass turf set uh, I'm using the ones from AK yeah I showed you guys before but those are uh, bigger chunks and usually but normally when you pick them off they are this size so you can see it but I cut it in tiny like this yeah show it better this way maybe you guys can see it better you know put some CA glue on it and then yeah put it where you uh, where you want to have it like I said try different types of vegetation and different types of things it always enriching your diorama so here you go gonna cut myself another small piece of those stuffs like this it's just simple you know choose some corner of it and take a small scissor and cut it off because otherwise they look uh, not bad when you have a bigger uh, diorama and more grass uh, but in this case those smaller chunks like these here are much better and much uh, more uh, realistic looking and also much more pleasant to look at and of course that they don't get off scale either so it looks all nicely and, and natural you know so see what I mean to give you guys an idea yeah it makes it richer as you can see I'm yeah, gonna add some few more, few tiny ones. Yeah, it's usually those tiny details who enrich your uh, dioramas. It's it's yeah. It, it, that th those small things are creating more realism than those big things you know you can show that you're doing effort and want to make going deeper in, in, the, in the details and uh, with this of course you're creating more a more realistic See that's with the bushes now I'm gonna add one last one and then we're gonna go to almost the final step and that's then uh, adding the, the pigment on the groundwork to again to achieve realism. I'm looking a bit to see where I could add it without overdoing it. Ah, uh, let's see. Let's put this. Oh no, no, actually not. Let's <laughs> think. You know what? I'm gonna add this guy here. Well, here you go. So now we're gonna take the pigments. 
yeah of course uh, everybody has his own methods but this is my uh, method the way I'm doing it and I like to, to use pigments actually one of my favorite mediums to use because it already creates that sandish texture also by itself and uh, yeah, the, the different colors in this case, yeah, I'll show you guys the set I have here. My favorite brand and pigments. And uh, they have, yeah, different uh, colors, so... And I'm applying them kind of a bit, all of them, uh, slightly a bit, so... To create that realistic look. Yeah. And my bottles. get myself a micro brush sorry guys for that to apply I use this because I like to work more precisely so I have some so now I dip it first in the darker pigments and I dab it Gently, like this, on the surface. Don't go crazy with it. Just a bit. You see it gives uh, already some different shades and colors and also it gives it more the impression of soil, dry sand, dry soil, you know. Like it's supposed to be in a desert. And again, this is a work of patience that's a, that's the key in modeling that's what it is all about you have to have patience for this hobby you go now take another color and again randomly because do it randomly Never uh, do it like in a pattern because it will take the realism away. See, you can see so small, yeah, like like sand grainish effect it gives, and it makes your vignette or diorama much more nicer looking and much more finer details, and of course much more pleasure to look at. So yeah, gently dab it, but make sure when you dab it, make that slightly tapping, that you actually, the key is, you push your pigments in the texture, so it stays there, because after this I'm not gonna use no any medium, like a, a pigment fixer or something, I'm not gonna need that, because with this way, I push them in and they will stay there so don't no worries about that yeah and uh, I want to ask you guys please subscribe you know it will support my channel and hit the like button to beat them damn <laughs> algorithms you know <laughs> you will help me a lot and uh, I will uh, have to say to my uh, Loyal subscribers and loyal, loyal uh, viewers, a big thanks goes to them for each time they're tuning in and uh, giving the support in their nice comments. And of course, guys, please feel free to share it around or on your Facebook. Just, uh, it will help me out a lot, so I really appreciate that, because any help of you guys is always welcome. So I can grow with my channel and do more things in the future. But for now, of course, we have to start somewhere, you know? But not without your support. That's very important to me. So please keep that in mind. 
Just just below, hit the hit the like button. Good or bad, have a comment. And as you can see, I always reply. If people do the effort to to comment, I find you have to reply them at least with with a thanks, you know, and uh, tell them how much you appreciate it. Cause it's for you guys I'm doing this to show you guys how I do my stuff, and I hope to inspire you, of course. You would try to do your own vignettes inspired uh, by what I'm doing here. So then I achieve my goal. Then that's uh, exact my goal. To inspire people and to make a modeling. Because this is the best hobby. You know we guys, lockdowns, all that shit, we didn't care about, you know. Because we used... We having our bench, we're the happiest people in the world. We will survive actually anything. <laughs> yeah, as you see I'm busy here now, still tapping. Using the different colors. Let's see. So here you go, you see what I meant, see all those different shades and, and tones and also that grittiness it creates now. So actually we are at the end of our tutorial, this is the end result actually. So, so guys I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, oh yeah. Next, the next video, the video after this one is the one where uh, the whole the, uh, the whole vignette with the uh, with the things on with the soldiers on it. But I'm not gonna tell you what yet. That's gonna be a surprise. So stay tuned to see the total end result. So and thanks again for watching. Have a nice day. Stay all safe and well there. Bye.